I do love the book of Joshua. Joshua began as a servant of Moses. He served him. He understood what it was to do an apprenticeship. It's an amazing thing when you, you do an apprenticeship with someone. I think it was Shaka Zulu, the warrior from Africa. He said, if you want to be a champion, be apprenticed to a champion. There's something about doing an apprenticeship. Well, Joshua certainly did that. And then came the death of Moses and God laid out to Joshua, this, this champion warrior, servant, um, who held the hands of Moses. God speaks to him and it says, Joshua chapter 1, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people under the land which I give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given it to you, as I said to Moses. What a great promise. Everywhere you set your foot. I'm taking that promise for myself in this decade. Everywhere I put the sole of my foot, God's going to give it to me. I, I believe that everywhere these feet travel this year, there's going to be a tremendous impact and we're going to take great ground. And then he talks about from the wilderness of Lebanon and so on and so on. And then he gave a tremendous promise in verse 5. He says, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. No man can stand against you. An authority and a strength and a mantle. Uh, we, we read of Stephen. The Bible says they're unable to cope with the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Just before he was martyred, he terrified them. They, they didn't know what to do. And here it says, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Then he says, I'll be with you as I was with Moses. I'll be with you. I won't fail you. What a promise. God's not going to fail us. God doesn't fail us. He's not going to forsake us. And then he says, be strong and very courageous. I think the demands on us in this decade to be incredibly strong in who we are, what we are, what we carry, our hunger, our passion, our prayer life. We're going to need to be super strong people in the Holy Ghost. Um, and he goes on and he says, be strong and be of good courage for under this people shall you divide an inheritance. And again, he says, only be strong and very courageous that you may go in someone that you might um, mayest observe to do everything according to the law, which Moses, my servant commanded. Don't turn to the right nor the left that you may prosper wherein you go. And so the challenge was there. Be strong, be courageous. I'm going to be with you. I'll stand with you. No man can stand against you. You've got an inheritance. You're going in to take it. Well, that's exactly what's happening with us. We're taking ground. We're going in. We're taking it. And we're people carrying the power of God. Don't forget who you are, what you carry, what's in you. Don't forget what, that it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, that you're filled with the power of God, filled with all the fullness of God. But here he goes on and he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. This book of the law, the word of God, will not depart out of your mouth. Here's a great key to success in the 2020s. Great key to success is that this word, this word of God, will not depart out of your mouth. And then it goes on here and it says, but you shall meditate therein day and night. You will meditate in it day and night. The word meditate is an interesting word. It means to reflect, to moan, to mutter, to contemplate, um, to keep repeating. It's a mumbling, a murmuring of the Word of God, speaking of the Word of God. It's not going to depart out of your mouth, it says here. It's a muttering, it's a murmuring of the Word of God, what the Word of God says. When pressure comes on, speak the Word. When Difficulties come, speak the word. When you're having success, speak the word. Keep speaking it. We've got to keep putting it in and speaking it out. And so he says, this word of God or the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Why? That you may observe to do everything that is written therein. For God says, for when you do that, then he says, I'm going to make your way prosperous and you're going to have good success. I don't know about you this, this, this year and the next 10 years, but I want, and, and after that, I'd like to be living a lot longer than that. We're going to be prosperous. We're going to be blessed. We're going to live in prosperity, success, impact. Everywhere our feet step, God's going to give it to us, our inheritance. We're going to take land. We're going to seize things in God. We're going to see nations change. We're moving in the power of God 
Everything we touch is going to prosper. Um, if we're living in that word, we're going to have good success. I want good success. Do you want good success? Prosperity. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and have a good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you everywhere you go. There's some tre tremendous promises here. You read this and your spirit lifts. Honestly, your spirit just lifts. You read it not just for Joshua, but we're going into our promised land. We're seizing ground. Take these for yourself. I love when he talks about meditating on the word. Meditate day and night. Keep meditating. And, you know, I read David and the psalmists, and uh, they speak about meditating. Uh, Psalm 1 says, speaks of the man um, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates, mutters, murmurs, speaks, repeats over and over, day and night. What will he be like? He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He will not be affected by drought. He'll be like a tree planted by waters. The leaves will grow. The fruit will grow. He will be fruitful. What does God say? Right in the first of the Psalms, the man who delights in the law of God and meditates when? Day and night. What did he say to Joshua? Keep this word in your mouth. Meditate day and night that you might prosper and have good success in everything that you do. David would contemplate on God's goodness, his kindness, his blessings, his success, his prosperity, and so on, and all of his ways. Let me, let me give you some scriptures for a couple of minutes. That's always good. Um, Psalm 63 verse 6 says, When I remember upon my, me my bed and meditate in the night. He says, I remember your ways, remember your word, and I meditate upon you in the night. In the night seasons, I'm meditating. I'm speaking the word of God, who I am. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above only, never below. I'm born to rule. I'm born to reign. Jesus, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Forever, O Lord, thy word has been established in heaven. There has not failed all, one of all of his good promises which he made to Moses, his servant. Keep speaking what the word of God says. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. You're filled with all the fullness of God. Keep speaking the positive words. I've got a whole collection of words that I speak that uh, I meditate on and I speak through the day. The scripture says, don't let them depart out of your mouth. We read in Joshua, same in Psalm 1. And here again, we read that David meditates on at night. Psalm 77 verse 12 says, I will meditate also of all your works and talk of your doings, talk of your works, talk about your miracles. I'll talk to myself says David, I talk about the miracles. I talk about the way he's protected me. I guess he talked about the way he was brought from a shepherd to a king. I guess he talked about how he was taken from a humble shepherd and was raised up to take out Goliath. He talked about those things to himself. He talked about the successes of God. He talked about the strength of God. He talked about the anointing of God. He talked about the power of God as he lay upon his bed. Psalm 119 is full of promises here on meditation. He says, I will meditate in thy precepts, in your word, in your ways, in the things you do and how you do it. And he said, I will have respect unto your ways. He goes on in verse 23 of Psalm 119, which is the longest psalm. It's a long psalm and it's worth reading. It's worth going through Psalm 119 to just look at the, the precepts of God. He says, princes also did sit and speak against me. What did I do? Thy servant meditated in thy statutes. He said, people were rising up. Princes were rising up. People were rising up against me, saying all manner of evil about me. What did I do? I simply meditated in your word, in your statutes. When they're talking about me, I was thinking about you. When they're talking about me, I was talking about you. When they're talking about my failures, I was talking about your strength. They're talking about the things that were wrong with me. I was talking about the greatness of you, O oh God. Meditating and speaking it on his bed, speaking it in the night. Verse 48 says, My hands also will I lift up unto your commandments, which I've loved, and I will meditate, speak, mutter thy statutes, in thy statutes. Fantastic stuff. 
Verse 78 of Psalm 119, as I said, it's a big one. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. All right? Let them be ashamed. Let the proud, those that have risen up against me and, and dealt with me perversely, twisted, horrible. The way they've dealt with me has been horrible. But David says they did it without a cause. But I will meditate on your precepts. He said they came against me. They perversely treated me so badly. But I will simply speak your word. I'll keep declaring and muttering what you've said about me. Here's the strength of victory. Psalm 119 verse 148 says, Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. My eyes prevent the night watches that I may meditate in your word. Psalm 143 verse 5 says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse or ponder, utter, commune and declare on the works of your hands. You know, people say don't look back. But I love to look back to things where God met me. I love to look back on days when God provided supernaturally for me. I love to look back to days when I went to the letterbox at my house. I don't mean to have them much these days. And there was enough money for a crusade in an envelope sitting in the letterbox. I remember days when I watched some phenomenal miracles, watched the dead raised and, and extraordinary healings and watched our teams moving in power. And when I think about those things and talk about them, I keep reminding myself that God is a good God. He is a faithful God. He is a great God. And as I think and muse on all of those things, then I become strong in the Lord. And then writing to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul is writing to Timothy. And he says, don't neglect the gift that is in you that was given by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Don't forget that. But he said, meditate on these things. The word in the, in the Greek uh, means to take care of, resolve in your mind, imagine, and I guess also speak out. But he said, meditate and think on these things that have come with prophecy, the things that came with the laying on of hands, the power that came on you with the laying on of hands. He said, give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to everybody. He says, don't neglect the gift that's on you, but meditate on it. Meditate and speak about the thing that's happened to you. Talk to yourself about what's in you. Talk about the promises. And he said, there'll be profiting in your life, he said to Timothy, that everybody is going to see. Everybody is going to know. Don't you want to put that challenge to you to meditate day and night, to murmur the word, to speak the word. So keep declaring it, keep speaking it, because you're going to have a year of, of blessing. You're going to have a year of profiting. You're going to have a year when everything you put your hand to is going to be supernaturally blessed. I would love to take a moment in this session to pray for you. I want to do that now. Father, I pray for every person right now that is taking this word into their heart, that as they meditate on your word, that they think and muse and meditate on the word of God your word, I pray that they will have strength, that they will know that everywhere they go, you're with them, that no person will be able to stand against them, that you'll give them ground, that everywhere their feet tread, you'll give it to them as an inheritance. You will prosper them, prosper them in their work, prosper them in their, in their coming, in their going, prosper them in everything they put their hand to. And Lord Jesus, be a blessing to them. May we Continue to meditate on your word that is life to them that find it and health, healing, and prosperity and blessing to everyone that finds your word. Thank you. We love you today. God bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you in your mighty name. Amen. Be strong. Thanks for watching.